hello and welcome back to another pen talk thank you very much for tuning in and listening and watching my exploration of the wide world of pens and yes i've been on a buy no pen hiatus but eh, i am weak in spirit and i do continue to window shop the various platforms that i peruse and while on Etsy, which I had been because of the Pen BBS Yellow Sandwich Cookie pen, this one popped up and, hey, you should look at this suggestions on Etsy. And when I saw the pen, I just fell in love. And a lot of my purchases are gut purchases. And I've been very, very seldom disappointed and most of the time extremely pleased with my decision. So we're going to explore, unbox, and it is a box, and show you this pen, and maybe we'll all appreciate why I made the purchase. So the pen arrived very quickly by the United States Postal Service. The only thing that delayed it was 4th of July, so it was mailed on the 5th, and it arrived at my house on the 7th, very quick. So this is the purchase that I did on Etsy. The listing is already gone. Uh, I guess that what happens when something sells out. Unlike uh, eBay where you can continue to pull up the listing for quite a bit after the purchase. So we're going to cut that tape and open it up. So I enjoy wood and stabilized wood where they put it in a resin into the pen. It's always attracted me and an interesting, you know, pattern, grain of the wood and the different stains that it can take. So what appropriate device to use to open up this box. And it's taped on all the sides, which is what I do when I ship a box. You never know. Rather be safe than sorry, as they say. Ah, it opens up easily. Some nice brown craft paper there. And, you know, here's the letter. Nice thank you from Keith. And there's the note I left on Etsy for him. But he only had a medium nib, but that's fine with me. As he said, it's a Bach nib. There's a nice little card identifying the pen. Has a converter too, that's nice. Thing about care. And there's a card. I'll have links to his site on Etsy for those that want to look at some of the great visual pens that he has. And it's a typical wrapping, which works very, very well. A nice box, which I didn't expect. Very, very securely packaged. And there's the cartridge, which we will not use. Some more bubble wrap and the pen. And it is beautiful. I like the way this dark pattern, which he has put in a sparkly resin there. Really, really well polished. A little bit of a conical end to the top of the cap, matching it at the bottom of the barrel. I like it. It pen has some decent heft to it. More than I expected from a wooden pen. Cat comes off in a lot of turns, about three or so. And there's a brass section, which I like. It's a little on the small side, but I think it'll be quite usable. And there's a very nice two-tone... Bach nib, and I happen to be a, a Bach fanboy. I think they really make a very good nib, very nice tipping, and usually a little bit soft. And I like the fact that these are all nice brass components there. Your standard converter. Well made. Very nice. Let's explore it, figure out what kind of ink we're going to put in it, and put a nib to paper.
Yes, I'm having construction work done on the deck, and you can hear hammering in the background. There's really not much to take apart. I unscrewed the nib. First you remove the converter because it'll get hung up as it connects to that end of that nib assembly. And it unscrews nice from this brass section. All the threading is done very, very well. Nice, clean, and smooth. I could pull this apart, but I'm no, I'm not in a mood or need to do that. One of the things I like about Bach is, is that it, there's a recess in the top of that nib assembly that really seats that converter well. And I've never had any issues with Bach converters, or most converters, you know, maybe a, one out of a hundred sometimes I'll get an issue, but generally easy to correct and fix. So that's it. It's ready for inking. I always talk about flushing and cleaning every pen that I get, old or new. So this is just a fluxing bulb. You can get these. They use it for cleaning ears, noses, or whatever. So you can get a, a bulb. You may have to cut it to fit well. And I have a few of them. And it just draws up this soapy water solution that I have. And then I flush it out. And I think it prepares the surface for ink also. And we're going to do a final flush in just clear water. And then it's ready for inking. I recently upped my supply of these very small O-rings. I tried to buy some O-rings on Amazon, but they don't come in the sizes that seem to work well with pens. And I put a small O-ring down at the bottom of this nib assembly so it seals up ink tight against the section and you don't get ink between the nib assembly and the section. I mean, it may work well by just tightening it up with that little flange at the bottom, but I like a little bit of extra added protection. I also put a slight bit of silicone grease on the threads at the end of the nib assembly. Yes, it is turntable worthy. I am very impressed, very, very happy. I have no other pen that looks like this. The attention to detail, the way that that Australian burl wood blends in with that black sparkly acrylic kind of reminds you of a shore and a black sea you know and as you get away from the shore there's some sand and you get into hills and then into mountains which are a darker color very very impressed if this pen had a well-known brand associated with it it would be many many times more the price that i paid for it i think this is a real bargain a real work of art by an artisan who does excellent work. Feast your eyes. We'll continue to explore this pen, but obviously, Miss Sizemore and Mr. Seizemore had to take a look. And we're going to take a look too. Let's zoom in a little bit on the ocean. See if we can catch some of that sparkle. Show up some of the details of that wood. Great. The more I handle this pen, the more it just constantly amazes me. I don't know whether the camera's catching all the subtleties in this incredible Australian Molly Burl wood. I'm probably butchering some of that pronunciation. But I've never seen anything like this. And yes, Connolly Pen Company does this with Jonathan Brooks acrylics. And Jonathan Brooks does amazing things with his acrylic. But the subtleties of wood, I don't think, can be matched in an acrylic. And the way that Keith has combined this wood coloring with this black acrylic that he put a little bit of sparkle into it, it's just amazing. It's just... Whew, Hopefully, you're appreciating this look, and I certainly am. And just a touch and feel, the way the polish is done, feels great in the hand. Feels as good as any ebonite pen you're going to use. You know, wood and ebonite share that natural characteristics. It's kind of warm to the hand. It just feels great. I'm sorry. It's a great pen, and I can't stop saying it's a great pen. I always like to have a different light to look at a pen. 
And we're in dark mode. Well, semi-dark. It is daytime here. So let's bring in the LED and play it on this pen. You can see that sparkle really come out in that darker area. And it does show up a little bit blue on the camera viewfinder, but it's pretty dark in my view. I just like this a lot. Hopefully you can see how consistent that polish is. I really appreciate that sparkly, watery section in the middle of the pen. One thing to also look at is the inside of the cap. You'll see a lot of threads there. And yes, it takes over four turns to bring the cap off, but you also see how thick that wall is of the cap. Very sturdy pen. If you look deep inside, we'll see a ledge way there down there at the bottom. Typical for sealing up against that brass section. So, yes, I'm very happy with the way this pen is made. And the more I look at it, the more I like it, the more I appreciate the engineering as well as the art that brought this pen to life. Well, yes, I wanted to use one of my new trauma links. So this is number seven. Which I think is a darker blue than number three, and I love number three in the Parker I am, but that's with my significant other. They like the pen. And yes, there is some glitter. Interesting color, the glitter, kind of like a sea green color. And as we mentioned before, it goes into suspension very easily, stays in suspension with just a little bit of action. Here's the paper towel I used to wipe off the nib after I filled the pen. And here's the writing of number seven with a glass nib. And if we come down to the bottom, I'm keeping now a collection of writing with pens filled with the inks above. And you can see how number seven is a darker, more intense blue than number three. But number three, I still kind of like a little bit more because of that kind of like pale sky blue. Just a nicer color. Number seven is just a little bit darker than I like my blues, but I still appreciate the ink. So now we're ready for some editorial comments, dimensions, and some more writing. And yes, the pen does not have a clip, and it definitely doesn't have anything to stop it from rolling. But that's okay with me because I very seldom use the clip on a pen. I don't carry them around in my pocket anymore. If I'm going to carry them around, they'll be in a case in a bag that is very well protected. I just can't get over how well this feels in the hand. It's not entirely a minimalistic design. There's a little step up between the barrel and the cap. And we'll give you those dimensions. It's nice. And yes, unfortunately, the cap takes a little bit over four turns to get off. Um, I'll talk to Keith about that, and uh, maybe we'll have a conversation with him at a later date. This section I got used to right away. It's not slippery. Brass tends to have a, a nice uh, feel to it. It's just well done, and that weighting is perfect. So it's weighted towards the nib. Yeah, this is 8 grams here, so that's a good deal of weight. It's the same amount of weight that's in this large cap. And then number 6 nib just complements this size and shape. It's plenty long enough to use unposted, and as you may have guessed, it's not a pen you would post. And I wouldn't post a pen like this anyways. It's too nice of a pen to post and potentially put marks on the end of the barrel or... If you're a very aggressive poster, you could crack the cap. But we're not going to do that. So I really like this pen. I'm very happy that Etsy recommended it to me and that I felt comfortable making the purchase from uh, Keith. And uh, now there's another pen turner that I really like and we'll be following to see what else they may do. So this pen has a serious amount of tipping on the end of it. 
and maybe it's a little bit of baby's bottom and it's a little bit over polished but the more I write with it the more consistent the flow becomes originally it was just a little hard start with the first writing but as I wrote more a page or two on some you know like brown paper bag is a good thing to use I didn't want to really do any tuning or smoothing of the nib I might do that after this video but I want to write with it for a while and a lot of people may have this experience with Bach nibs where they're just a little bit inconsistent when you first start using them but my suggestion is write a while and hopefully they get broken in and they become one of your favorite nibs you never know give it a shot This is really now a consistent writer. My first writing sample in the beginning of the video, there was a little bit of skipping on the P, on the C, but now you can see it's a very consistent nib. And as you probably heard, it's very smooth, which is what is an attribute of a nib that might skip a little bit, but it is really broken in well after just a few pages of writing. So I need to rate this pen, and that's a very difficult thing to do. I'm going to give it a 9.8. Why is it not a 10? Well, section is a little bit small. Uh, only, it only has fine and medium nibs, but then you can put any Bach nib in this you want. Just unscrew and screw in and out. And I have a lot of Bach nibs from my Keras Pens and Company. It gets two big checks for fit, finish, look. It's just a beautiful pen. And it gets a big check for ergonomics. I like the way that brass section looks and feels and weights the pen towards the nib. Why isn't it a 10? Eh, just not. And that's a personal opinion based on my experiences. So I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens. Finding something that you go wow about. And this is definitely a wow pen. And one of a kind. Talk about a limited edition. <laughs> An edition of one. <laughs> But that's what's nice. And like I said, I thought the price was a steal for what this pen is. So put some ink on paper. Find a pen you can go wow and fall in love with. If you reach the end of this video, and you notice now it's extremely consistent, starts up right away. That's what I expect in a Bach nib. And we're going to say bye. Dogs are barking because of the carpenters out working on the deck.